Hello, YouTube. I'm Vince White. I'm an employment attorney. On this channel, we answer publicly posted questions from YouTube users, getting folks the answers they need from an employment attorney. We are remaking yesterday's video from uh, Easter, which is, I believe, March the 31st of 2024, because Windows, Microsoft Windows, and all of Bill Gates' wisdom decided that because I turned off personalized ad experiences in my privacy settings, it, it needed to shut down my microphone. But not tell me. Just not tell me. Just the microphone's green. There's a little green light. The microphone is recording. The microphone will register that sound is coming in, but it will not, 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 absolutely not record. At least not for my videos. So that's cool. Really enjoyed the the 25 minutes I spent making that video just being wasted and you not getting a video yesterday. That sucks. Uh, but I'm going to remake that video because YouTube user Frankie uh, deserves a video. I think this is important. Um, side news. Interesting news. Several of the... I, I don't know if you've been following the, uh, the stories out of New York, but there's been a bit of a pandemic I don't, I don't know i just used that word um an epidemic an epidemic of um i guess men grown men walking around punching women in, in the face and in the head in new york um became so big that it was like trending on social like women talking about how they were just punched um just once by these by these men um, and, and like hard. Some of these women have concussions, black eyes. Some of them were knocked down. Um, I don't know if any were knocked out. I'm not I'm not up on it. Uh, but in new news, the cell phone police, otherwise known as the uh, NYPD, um, so called the cell phone police because they're they're always just on their cell phone instead of policing. Um, they apprehended three or four of the would be punchers. Uh, the pugilists, um, which is exciting. Like, I, I'm fascinated by the whole thing. I'm fascinated that that was a thing that grown men were doing because uh, that seems sad and horrific and very, like, incel motivated. Like, I don't know. Like, what was the what was the purpose? I don't think most of these people were, like, teens. Like, this is the kind of thing that you, like... A little bit expect out of like angry young teen men but i think like at least some of the people who were apprehended were apprehended they're just full-grown adults just adult men walking around like punching women <sighs> which is like uh, why why would you get out of that I don't understand. Like, e even if you're a bad guy, it, did you enjoy punching them? Like, what? Like, what was the win? Why would you run the risk of an assault charge? They didn't rob the women. This wasn't apparently sexually motivated. There, was, as far as I know, there was no like sexual assaults or anything like that. So, which I also just used the second word that demonetized my video. So this video is doubly demonetized. No, that's cool. Um, I just, the whole thing, the whole thing, so strange, so bizarre. I guess, I guess the reason why the NYPD got involved was because it was a social media trend, so they felt like they had to get on top of it. Um, but yay, I guess, that some of these assholes were apprehended, That, but just the whole thing. Like, what are we doing? Like, what, what are we doing? This is like, um... When you walk into like a really high-end business floor, like, uh, I don't know, go to some hedge funds and you go to their bathrooms and you're like, okay, so everybody on this floor is making minimum like 300K. Everybody. They can't use the bathroom properly. Like the, the public restroom is like destroyed. And you're just like, really? Even at this level of like human achievement, we as human beings can't figure out how to use the restroom? Like there's no hope for us when you think about that, right? Um, but it's kind of the same for me with looking at just random men punching women. Like, 
okay, so there's not really, there's no hope for us. Like, it, there's no, it wasn't even like, if somebody was hungry and they were like, robbing women. That's not good. But at least they can be like, that fellow was hungry. Right? Like, you know, there's like some rational self-interest. You can be like, well, I don't agree with it, but I, but I understand what was happening there. I just don't understand what's happening here. Like, what? For what purpose? Why? Just, just punching women? I. Why? <laughs> why? And they were random women. It wasn't like these were men who knew these women. These were just random women on the street. Like, I, I think a couple of the guys were like, walked up to the women, like, "Hey, sorry," and then punched them. Why are you sorry? If you're sorry, why are you doing it? Like, what? are we talking about here this is insane i don't all right rant over <sighs> center center all right frankie youtube user frankie i'm gonna read your question this is a follow-up to a video we made like three four days ago frankie provided some additional uh, information so we're gonna read it in and, and talk about it frankie says thank you for your response to my comment on your last video i will try my best to explain my situation I was wrongfully terminated from a community college which is affiliated with several with several other four-year colleges in a state. I'm not going to mention the state. I don't want there to be an identifying characteristic. I was not given proper notice of my potential termination, nor was I accommodated with the things the college knew I needed and which they put in writing with an SSA that put in writing with an SSA. I am suing them for discrimination for several reasons. Not being accommodated being one of those reasons. Makes sense. I hired an attorney who told, me, who told me it sounded like my case was strong. I paid $4,000. The EEOC, then, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, then did their process for what it is worth, and they gave me a right to sue letter. During this case, I was given a different attorney uh, from the one who I had originally hired uh, because that attorney left the law firm. The new attorney looked over my case and then received the right to sue letter from the EEOC. On the first meeting with the new attorney, she told me that they were not going to take my case to court because I am missing my own request for accommodations in writing that I should have done at the beginning when starting my job. That is my fault, but I did not think about it as I had verbally asked for accommodations at the beginning and they were granted, but not actually ever given to me. Not to mention the SSA document exists that my supervisor filled out on my behalf stating the accommodations needed, but she never told me about. During my talk with the attorney, I asked her about the SSA document, and she told me that it was not enough to use in court. So we began talking about settlement opportunities, and I asked about the changing, and I asked about changing my termination to a resignation. My lawyer went to their lawyer and came back to me with a settlement that would grant me a resignation. However, it also says I will not be eligible to be employed by their colleges, and I cannot speak of my case or talk negatively about them. As far as FERPA, the Americans with Disabilities Act, college policies, and various other legal claims I may have against them. This sounds like a gag order to me. Ultimately, I feel like I'm getting the short end of the stick if I sign that settlement. Thinking about it, I feel like a resignation is not enough for $4,000. I have been unemployed for almost a year now. It is a small town and gossip spreads and is toxic to someone's life. Yeah, bad gas travels fast in a small town. Certainly agree. Um, however, I feel like I can still gain employment someday, and even with a termination under my belt. At least I tried. I am legally blind with the, with an, oh, medical, with a med ed, and I am proud of myself regardless of the situation, but I will not let them get away with what they did. I believe I am owed more and will be signing, and will not be signing this settlement because I want the freedom to speak the truth about my story. Okay. So, Frankie, let's review, right? You have some written documentation in addition to your testimony that you sought accommodations. That written documentation, I believe, reflects that you were actually granted those accommodations. So your employer went through the interactive dialogue, and they granted you reasonable accommodations and then failed to make good on it. And you have multiple pieces of evidence that reflect it. You have your testimony. You have the testimony of the supervisor who engaged in that process with you, and you have an SSA document that seems to record that in writing. 
that's a fairly significant amount of evidence to show that that happened. Also, not for nothing, with ADA claims, it's important to remember that it's a new or should have known standard. And I don't know how you're getting around, and I don't know how uh, apparent your visual impairment is to folks around you, but if you're legally blind, uh, there's an awfully good chance, based on my life experience, not legally blind, but representing many people who are, that the folks around you knew you to be legally blind. So they knew or should have known that you were legally blind, which means they knew or should have known that you had a disability and you would require some accommodations. So that's all put together a fairly significant pile of evidence to show that your employer knew of your disability and your employer knew you needed accommodations. And they knew that they didn't grant you accommodations, right? So, to me, knowing only what you're sharing with me here, and being very, very clear that I'm not your attorney, and I don't know the case like your attorney knows the case, I'm not boots on the ground, like, I only know this blurb that you shared with me within a comment on YouTube, right? But assuming everything you're saying is accurate, that sounds like a case that ought to go to litigation. That sounds like a case that is potentially valuable. That sounds like a case that I would expect multiple firms to make you offers of representation on in terms of taking this case to litigation. And to be clear, because people are always like, oh, Vince just wants business. Yeah, you should not hire me. We would be, we would be expensive because we fly attorneys around the country, right? You should not hire us. You should hire a local firm if you can find one. Uh, because I don't see why you would take just a resignation. I also don't see the advantage for you of taking a resign, um, to having your termination turn into a resignation when you're also banned from seeking employment with that the rest of that university system. Like, what's the point of being able to say you resigned instead of terminate if you still can't seek employment from them? It doesn't do that much good for your future employment prospects, to my mind. I, I don't know what the value is to you. Maybe I misunderstood, but. Uh, for one, it sounds like folks already know in your town that you've pursued this claim. So, you know, commuting things to resignation doesn't do you a whole lot of good. As we already mentioned, bad gas travels fast in a small town. Everybody might already know, right? So I guess my thought is, um, based on what I know, I'm a little shocked at your attorney's recommendation. Now, fundamentally, the idea that you paid the attorney $4,000 and now you're not getting what you want that's something I don't buy into. Um, and I'll just say why. Like, listen, the attorneys don't guarantee you a result. When you pay them, they can't. That would be unethical and illegal, right? Um, that being said, the case sounds like it's worth a lot more than having your termination turn into a resignation. I'm not even sure what the value of that is for you in all honesty, I, I would put that value as close to zero of that kind of nom nominal change of your parting of ways, right? So I chopped that case around. Talk to local firms. Expand your search. If you have to, talk to national firms. But like, listen, try to go, try to go local. Bring this case to litigation, especially if everybody already knows about it. What's at, at that point, like, there's a lot less reason to not go forward to my mind, right? And I mean, it sounds like a viable, valuable claim. It sounds like you have some really good evidence there. Excuse me. And um, I would expect if you brought this forward, I would I would expect a, a strong possibility of success and and that success being of significant value for you just just based on assuming everything you're sharing with me is accurate and it, listen if you're hiding the lead or you're hiding some serious issues you know if you were running around setting traps on campus to murder students or something well that's going to change things obviously like that would fall into the category of stuff i don't know and i'm being ridiculous here i'm sure you weren't doing that but i'm just like kind of highlighting like listen maybe you're not telling me something but based on what you are telling me, which I take to be true and believe you fundamentally, this sounds like a valuable claim. I have no need to equivocate on that. As long as I give you the caveat that just based on what I know, this sounds like a money claim. Like as a young attorney, 
I would have been like, yeah, we're going to get paid. Like, let, let you know, let's do it, you know? Um, and I, I would still feel that way, <laughs> right? Like, that's it's a good, valuable case to my mind based on what you're sharing with me here. And I would urge you to consider bringing it forward. Anyways, Frankie, I hope this helps. If it does, like, subscribe, comment down below, share the channel so it can grow. If it doesn't, give me that thumbs down. I deserve it. Take care, everybody.